Swain Tooth. So this one got a lot of press and maybe some of the audience is familiar with it. It's a Bluetooth low energy set of vulnerabilities. You can see they, they've got quite a few vulnerabilities in 2019 CVEs released based on this. Real quick backstory on the, the weird name. So in the 90s, when the inventors of Bluetooth working for various industry partners, you know, people like Intel, big companies like that, were trying to converge on a pan, a personal area network technology. The ringleader, one of the ringleaders was a student of Scandinavian history. And it turned out King Bluetooth was able to unite the Viking kingdoms under one, <laughs> one command. And so the joke was once they were able to herd the cats and create Bluetooth, they should name it Bluetooth in, in honor of what King Bluetooth did. Swaintooth is, is, a, is a riff on that because Swaintooth was King Bluetooth's son and Swaintooth overthrew his dad, King Bluetooth, to take over the kingdom. So the joke here is that Swaintooth, the vulnerability, is, is finding some pretty big vulnerabilities into Bluetooth, which I thought was kind of a cute story. So Swaintooth is not a compliant attack. It depends on sending malformed packets to Bluetooth low energy SOC systems on chips and actuating various bad things like deadlocks, crashes, and buffer overflows. So they went through meticulously through 13 different SOCs, and they noted that those were in at least 480 different end devices, including things like MRI machines and glucose monitors, Fitbit, smart locks. The reason Swingtooth is possible is because the Bluetooth spec leaves many features up to the vendor to implement. And just like any spec, it specifies the packet structure and some of the state machines, but ultimately somebody's got to write some C code to deal with how all that works and make it, you know, reduce it to practice on a chip. And because the spec is so complicated, there's tons of corner cases and it's easy to imagine in this case, it's, it was proven that whoever's writing this, the SOC code miss corner cases and that causes these deadlocks and crashes and whatnot. So the gist of, the, of the, all the attacks is you're transmitting faulty packets over the air. And when the, the target system receives those packets and tries to parse them with the code on the system and chip, it ends up crashing or locking up the device. So one example attack from their paper in this plot here is changing the link layer length field. So here, even though the link layer, link layer is only five bytes, they indicated that it was gonna be 247 bytes. And that leaves this, this big padding here where there's extra data and that basically confuses the parsing logic in certain SOCs and causes them to crash.